Well, as an extended version for our Trader PhD customers, here is the full length interview with Secretary Mike Nag, Iowa's Secretary of Agriculture, Secretary Nag. First of all, thank you so much for joining. There have been a lot of headlines today that have been impacting mm -hmm. not just the pork industry now, but it seems the entire protein, dairy, and poultry industry. Can you walk us through this Defense Production Act and what that will do for U.S. agriculture? Well, first of all, Delaney, good to be with you. And, and yes, we had some, uh, some big news today and something that we've been asking for and, and you know, recognizing that there's a significant disruption. Uh, all of agriculture, of course, we know, but uh, particularly when it comes to livestock and, and, uh, and, you know, this disruption in things that were originally the you know, supply lines that headed to uh, uh, food service and those types of things versus what that those that headed for grocery stores, that's created disruption uh, for our egg producers and our dairy producers, really everybody, uh, turkey as well. And then with this pork and beef side of things, you've got issues around the actual packing plants and processing facilities. And, uh, you know, clearly uh, when we're at talking about as much as maybe a third of Iowa's uh, pork processing capacity is down or plants that have slowed down, that's creating a ripple effect as, as animals back up on farms. And there's really only so many options there. We've got to find other ways to market or move animals through some sort of system, uh, you know, um, and, and ultimately folks, uh, we'll have to look at uh, possibly euthanizing and disposing of animals. And for folks that get up every day and go to, to work caring for animals, that's a heart-wrenching thing to do. And so uh, we know that this really all starts with running plants wherever possible. And that starts with taking care of workers. And whether it's testing or PPE or putting in mitigation steps, that packers need to be doing everything they can to protect their workforce so that they can safely go to work. We also have seen a bit of a we've seen a difference in how different states deal with this and some other states may be looking at uh, uh, asking plants to shut down, whereas the state of Iowa, we've been looking to support plants and help keep them running. Uh, so what we asked for yesterday, joined with Governor Reynolds and Senator Ernst and Senator Grassley, requesting that the, the president consider invoking the Defense Production Act, which would, in a sense, nationalize this effort and say that, you know, there's a certain set of guidelines or directives that uh, this industry is essential. It's needed if we're going to continue to supply customers with what they need, uh, that these plants need to run. Not just pork plants, but really all processing plants, but it absolutely uh, will impact the pork uh, industry. And so when you look at national guidelines, President Trump then, it seems maybe issued an executive order saying that all facilities, as you mentioned, not just pork, mm -hmm. would be under the guidelines provided at a national level. So does that mean that the administration is going to step in and take over how things are run? Will they be using their own workers or how will that work? You know, this is still, as we record this, it's really pretty fresh news. And so uh, I think we're going to be looking through all that. I, I do not expect, no, that I don't think that means that there would be, you know, people brought in to run plants. But I think it, it would, what we expect is that it'll lay out conditions under which plants should run and, and really lay out the, um, the importance and underscore the importance that this is an essential service and, and provide additional resources. So again, if it's testing or PPE that's needed to help uh, that workforce feel confident that they can go to work and be protected, then those are the types of things that should also flow with this order. So I think there's uh, a lot more to learn about this, but the, the fact that the federal government is speaking about this and that the president is looking to do this executive order, I think just again, speaks volume, volumes about the importance of what's happening throughout the food and agriculture supply chain, uh, but you know, particularly in pork as well. And when you look at it from a producer side of things, do you have any clarity on how they'll handle producer intake or how mm. those folks that have been backed up, you know, for maybe two or three weeks will be able to get into the facilities? Yeah, no detail on that. You know, uh, I think, again, that's oftentimes that really should be left between the producer and the, and the buyer or the packer. And uh, so I would expect that that will continue. But, you know, again, we'll, we'll learn as we go through here. But again, the, the important thing is to recognize that this food and agriculture supply chain from beginning to end, from all the things that farmers need to go to the field and care for their livestock every day on the farm, all the way down the chain to uh, food showing up at the grocery store and, uh, and out the door there, that, that supply chain is critically important. And so there needs to be a, a recognition of that. 
And I think this uh, helps underscore the importance. And I think we'll also really then direct states to also support those packing plants and the communities that are around them to, to also work with packing plants to try to get the, you know, make the conditions right for them to operate. So the packing plants will still have purview over their own facilities with some guidelines coming from a federal level. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? I think that would be a good expectation is that, you know, you've got, you've got uh, the federal government again, will will order that, that these are essential services, essential functions, but you know, flat out, there still needs to be things that happen at the local level again, to ensure that workers are safe, that they are protected and that uh, you know, if there's testing needed, that those things are happening. So, you know, this will, still need to be, uh, uh, you know, folks working together at the local level to uh, ensure that these plants can safely run. And since I have you, we're looking right now at having these facilities remain open because we're concerned or consumers are concerned about the perhaps lack mm. of food in the system here. And I've seen estimates that said have, as early as the next two weeks, we could start to see shortages at the grocery stores. Are you worried about that for Iowa consumers? Oh, it's absolutely a, a, a reality of if you disrupt that supply chain, that, that what that ultimately means is that consumers will lose a choice or that there won't be the availability that we need. Now, the good news is we've got product. There is still processing going on. We, we've got a supply chain that, that's in existence. But, but yes, it, it, further disruptions uh, definitely bring the, the, the uh, possibility that there's a shortage at the grocery store. Now, again, we need to continue to work to keep processing moving and, and avoid that occurrence. But uh, this is really an unprecedented situation. And we just know that the longer that the disruption occurs in the processing uh, side of things, that, that that could impact what happens uh, for consumers. So that's, again, why it's so important across the entire food and agriculture supply chain to keep things moving. Besides this latest concern, what else are you watching for or what else should we be aware of during these COVID times? Well, it, it, there's, there's not a sector in agriculture that hasn't been impacted. And uh, we've talked a lot today about livestock, uh, but we know that renewable fuels has been a tremendously uh, dire situation when you've got you know, up to 50% reduction in the amount of transportation fuel demand, that industry is hurting. And, and again, we need to make sure that we're, we're uh, providing them the assistance that they need so that there's an industry to restart on the other side of this. And, and again, whether it's the egg producers that are, that are hurting because of their lack of a, of a market on the food service side or dairy because their supply chain has been disrupted, this is a challenging time for folks. And uh, I think about the only thing we can say is that we know that the sooner that we can return to some sort of normalcy, the better uh, when it comes to our economy, but certainly as it relates to our agriculture economy and our ag producers. That's sort of an understatement, but I think that's what we're dealing with here in, uh, in, in, in these unprecedented times. Since you mentioned ethanol, I'm going to go ahead and, and ask mm. one more question about that too. The administration has released some details now under the stimulus package and agriculture has been largely taken care of, but ethanol has not. Do you anticipate that the administration will do some sort of, I hate to use the term, but bailout program for ethanol? You know, uh, we, we're really appreciative of the fact that USDA did release uh, some very important and much needed assistance for producers. Um, but it didn't cover everything that it needs to. You know, again, there are some notable absences. Uh, uh, renewable fuels were not, ethanol was not addressed. And certainly missing from that list was direct assistance to the ethanol industry. You know, also on the purchasing side of things, there's no egg uh, product that's being purchased uh, through that, that government program. And so there's a good example of where those are two things, uh, in addition to some others that need to be addressed. And so uh, you know, we just know that that uh, we need to have an industry to stand back up again, and that means we've got to provide some direct assistance. So, uh, yes, we're we're working to uh, to see that we can see some uh, renewable fuel assistance included in that next round of of uh, uh, stimulus. Fantastic. Well, Secretary Nag, thank you so much for joining. Absolutely, great to be with you.